Our Bibles in Genesis chapter 4. Hope you have your Bible this morning. Genesis chapter 4. It's a very basic message from God's Word. You'll know all the names. I was hearing some information the other day and the person's name was Cain. And I thought, well, I don't think I'd name my son Cain. <laughs> um, there's a few names that have kind of lost their popularity. That's one. Judas is probably another that you won't hear a whole lot. Jude, very similar, but uh, quite a different. Uh, but I, I won't complain if, you know, maybe he's named after uh, Sugar Cain. You know? <laughs> Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to read quite a bit here, uh, verses 1 through 17. And uh, as, as you listen, just... Uh, Think about this story. We're going we're gonna to be looking at the, the truth of God's Word here this morning. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, let me just give it a moment here. We all right? Verse 3, and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy faith shall I face, face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. The Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Let's just stop reading there. Uh, what a story. This is uh, our beginnings as humans. Uh, God made us, and uh, the first two boys, some, some people think that Cain and Abel were twins. It talks about one conception and two births. Could be. And, and it's, I found it interesting as, as I read through, you know, God asks Cain some questions. When God asks you a question, he already knows the answer. <laughs> when he was asking Cain these questions, it wasn't that God didn't know. He wanted Cain to stop and, and think about it, and he was giving Cain an opportunity to change his mind. Uh, that's why it's good to pray about things and, and pray honestly with the Lord. Sometimes just voicing something to the Lord will help you think, hey, that's not right. I shouldn't be saying that to God, <laughs> and, and it'll change you by your, your conversation with the Lord. But, you know, here's this chapter, chapter 4. That's not very far into the book, is it? And already sin has, has made its mark, and yet the chapter starts with such hope there's not much greater hope than when a child is born, is there? Man, you know, they're just so precious, they're so little and so sweet, but every mass murderer was a child at some time. Every terrible person was a baby. Every great person as well. It starts with hope, doesn't it? That's the way life is. A new baby. And these men, these young, these babies grow up and mature and become men. But somehow Cain 
went wrong. When, when he was faced with a choice, he not only disobeyed God, uh, he murdered and lied and uh, went out from the presence of the Lord, the Bible says. He, he did not want God to tell him what to do. There's a statement there that I want you to think about in verse 7. Uh, the Lord is, is giving Cain a, a second chance, really. And he's giving him a warning here. And he says, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And I want to emphasize that, that phrase this morning. Sin lieth at the door. You know, we often have opportunities uh, to make decisions. And you need to be aware, Satan is waiting to get you. Sin lies at the door. Now, the, the picture that's there in those words, this is real easy to understand. The picture that's there in those words is of a wild beast crouching, waiting for you to step out and jump on you and eat you. We understand that. You understand that. Sin lies at the door. We need to understand Satan is not our friend. Satan is our enemy. Now, later on in the Bible, there's someone else standing at the door. You know who it is. It's Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now the question is, who are we going to let in and be at home with? The big difference, most of the world chooses to go their own way. They step out foolishly and Satan has them. They step into eternity and they're lost forever. But Jesus, that gracious Savior, stands at the door. He's the one who gave his life for us. You know, what a precious thing it is. It all started. God, God wasn't surprised when Adam and Eve sinned, by the way. God wasn't surprised when Cain sinned. God made us knowing we'd sinned. God made us knowing he'd have to come as the Savior. Man, you wouldn't have done that. Neither would I. But God loves us. He gave us a choice. He made us like him so that we could fellowship with him. And here's... Here's Cain. He's tested and he fails. Now, we know something about this because God tells us something in Hebrews chapter 11. Let me just read it to you. He says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Now, we know something about those sacrifices. When Cain and Abel made those sacrifices, God says, Abel did it by faith. Now, the Bible tells us what that is. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. God had told them what to do. This wasn't just, oh, I think I'll do this. God had told them what, it, what to do for a sacrifice. And Abel said, I'll do it. Cain said, I'll do what I want. I'll do what I think is right. I'll do what makes me look important. I raise fruit and vegetables. I'll give God fruit and vegetables. Listen, that's the basis of most religion in the world. We won't do what God says. We'll do what we want. We'll, we'll please God by our works. Well, Cain was the beginning of that. He was without faith. He was, he was without righteousness. He didn't go to God God's way. Well, the Lord encourages him. He, he confronts him and says, you got a long face. What's going on with you, <laughs> basically? You're not looking too happy. What are you angry about? You know, we, we spend a lot of time not being what we should. Uh, and he says to him, if you do well, I'll accept you. But if you don't do well, sin is waiting to have you. Sin is waiting to destroy you. It's like a wild beast crouching at the door. And boy, we see it in his life. We see it uh, right, through, right through history. Sin destroys us. Sin tears us down. He's encouraged and offered victory. He's also warned. Sin lies in wait. Maybe that's where you are this morning. You've realized that you don't want to go God's way. And God is speaking to your heart saying, listen, there's only one way. Only one way to heaven. Only one way that's God's way. Maybe you're right there where Cain was. Well, listen, we've read the rest of the story. We know how it turns out. You don't want to go the way Cain went. Go the Lord's way. Uh, then he's, he's tested again and, and fails with, with his brother there in verse 8. You know, what a terrible thing. He's so upset that God would accept Abel that he kills him. 1 John chapter 3 and, and verses 11 and 12, 
It's interesting, God just gives us little insights into to this story. 1 John 3, 11 says, You heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. See, Cain killed Abel because he, he was wicked. And the Bible says that uh, God put a curse upon Cain. Now, don't, don't read more into that than, than what it is. Don't try to make that a, a nation of people or anything. That was, that was Cain. God put a mark on Cain and, and so on. But even in the curse that God put particularly on Cain, God offered him protection. Yeah, he's, he's so gracious. And Cain separated himself, it says. He went out from the presence of the Lord. And then he, he knew, really, success. Cain had a family. Cain had a, a city. Uh, he, he knew worldly success, but eternal failure. There's a lot of people like that. Man, they're, they're great at what they do, but it's all in vain. They're going to die and go to hell. You know, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We need to apply that to ourselves this morning. Uh, there's only one way to God, and it's God's way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth and the life. And if we didn't understand that, he adds, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. We need to believe God's way. Fruit and vegetables don't picture the blood of Christ. <laughs> now, I know there's some red vegetables and all that, uh, but good works just will not cut it with God. The Bible says we fall short of, of His standard. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, without the shedding of blood is, is no remission. You know, offering our best is not enough. Uh, listen, I, I meet some wonderful people. I, I get out door knocking and I, I enjoy it, you know, most of the time. Uh, you meet some mean people too, but you know, you meet a lot of really nice people. But you know, being nice won't get you to heaven. <laughs> well, I wish it, in, in a sense, I wish it would, but you know, it, it just doesn't. Now, I, I'd rather have a nice neighbor than a mean neighbor, but I'd rather have a mean neighbor that trusted Christ. <laughs> you know, we, we need to trust the Lord. It, it's not by works of righteousness. Sin crouches at the door. Now, Christ warned Peter about this. We think of this particularly in relation to lost people. Uh, you know, a person needs to make a choice. Am I going to become a Christian or not? But you know, even for Christians, uh, we're affected by sin. Uh, sin wants, Satan wants to ruin you if you're a Christian. He wants to make you useless in, in the Lord's service. Uh, Jesus said this to Peter in Luke 22. He said, Simon, that's his, his other name, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Boy, there's a picture. Satan wants to grind you up. He wants to make you nothing. But I've prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Well, you probably know Peter's story. Peter did fail. Peter was full of himself. He was big. He was tough. You know, he could do it. Well, no, he couldn't. He failed the Lord. And it broke his heart. Different than Cain. You know, Cain was talking back to the Lord, wasn't he? Not Peter. Boy, he, he wept. Uh, he, was, uh, he was repentant over what he did. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, it, it says this, Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Cain was sorry, but not to repentance. He was sorry he got caught. He was sorry he couldn't have his own way. There's a lot of sorry people in the world. Some of them just figure, well, I'll just commit suicide. And boy, the devil laughs at that. He said, I got you coming and going. But Peter was, was sorry. He was truly repentant. And you know, the Lord was able to use him. He sinned. He, he failed. But when the Holy Spirit came, Peter was the one God said, you get up there and talk for me. Boy, Peter preached and, and people responded. People heard the word of the Lord. God was able to use Peter again. He says, God uses him to write in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'm sorry, chapter 5 and verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So he lived that. He'd humbled himself under the hand of God, and then God was able to use him as a, as a servant. Paul, Paul warns in 1 Corinthians Chapter 9 and, and verse 27, he says, 
I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul says, I don't just do whatever I want. I don't just do whatever I can. He says, I try to keep my body under God's control so that I don't live a different message than I'm preaching. You know, sin is not our friend, folks. Uh, Satan uh, knows that we're in a battle. And let me tell you something about Satan. He cheats. <laughs> Satan doesn't play fair. Right. Satan cheats. He wants, he wants to ruin you. Sin was at the door of Cain's life. And God warned him. God offered him uh, another opportunity, but he wouldn't take it. You know, if we'll humble ourselves, God will lift us up. We're all affected by sin. To be born again, you've got to recognize that you're a sinner, that Christ died for your sins and offers you salvation. To live the Christian life, you've got to recognize, hey, I can't do this on my own. Satan wants to ruin you. Sin lies at the door of our lives as individuals. But you know, it goes on. Cain wasn't just an individual. Cain was a husband and a father. Sin lies at the door of our families. Did you notice that in, in verse um, 16 and 17? Yeah, people often ask, where did Cain get his wife? Well, that's a, that's a simple, simple answer. And, uh, he, married, he married a sister or a close, close relative. It was before God had said not to do that, and it, uh, it worked fine. But you know, he had children. He had a wife. And because of his relationship to the Lord, his family was away from the Lord. You know, I've met people who were saved as children, but then they didn't live for the Lord. E even in their marriage and even raising their children, they didn't live for the Lord. And then they turn around one day and they see, my children don't know the Lord. My children despise what I believe. Because they've, they've not done what God has said to do. Satan wants to ruin our families. Listen, it's, it's hard work raising a family. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. Uh, you'll think and feel things you never thought you'd think or feel uh, when you have a family. But God can help you. God knows that. Because of Cain, his family was out of the presence of the Lord. You know, think of a couple of examples. You remember Lot in the Old Testament, uh, Abraham's nephew? Abraham gave him the choice of the land. He looked and, oh, I like that land. That'll benefit me. And he didn't pay any attention that it was right part of Sodom and Gomorrah. He not only ended up near Sodom and Gomorrah, he ended up in Sodom. And he lost his family. God physically had to drag him out before he destroyed Sodom. His family was lost. The ones that had already married wouldn't come with him. The ones that weren't married came with him, but they were, they were ruined. It's some of the saddest chapters you'll ever read there when you read about Lot's family. Because of his lack of a stand for God, his family was lost. But you, you take another example like Joshua. Remember Joshua? What a great man. You know, Moses' right-hand man. You know, Moses didn't even get to go into the land, but Joshua and Caleb did because they lived for the Lord. And Joshua's statement, when, when he was coming to the end of his life, he said to Israel, choose you this day whom you'll serve. He said, but as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And he had lived that. He would lived by faith. And the, the Bible says God, God blessed him because of that. Sin lies at the door of our families as husbands and wives and as children. We need to be aware of that. God can use you to hurt your family. God can use you to hurt your family. Don't let it be. Sin lies at the door of our nation. Did you notice Cain built a city? I don't know how you do that, but uh, he did it. He named it after his son, Enoch. Enochville, I guess. Sin lies at the door of our nation. You know, the hope of our nation is that individuals and families will live for the Lord. It's not in Social Security. It's not in the battleships and airplanes that we have. It's not in our sports, not in our, our, our medical prowess. It's in the Lord. That's where our hope is. And as Christians, we need to stand for the Lord. You know, the Bible says of Joshua, that man who, who lived for the Lord. Let me just find the verse here. It's Joshua 24, verse 31. 
Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua. He had an influence on his nation, on his family, because he stood for the Lord. Sin lies at the door of our nation. Uh, you know, as Christians, we need to stand for what's right, and we need to stand against what's wrong. That's hard. It's hard sometimes to say, I'm not doing that. It's wrong. <laughs> and as a Christian, uh, you know, we're living in wicked times, and it will cost you to live by faith. Some of you have experienced that already. If you stand against what's wrong and stand for what's right, it'll cost you. It could cost you your job. In some places, it could cost you your life. We need to, to stand for the Lord. Sin lies at the door of our nation, the door of our family, the door of your heart. There's always that temptation to do wrong. And yes, sin lies at the door of our church. Man, we, I'll be honest with you, we've had some bad things happen in the last year. And some of you are probably not even aware of it. There's been some, some, some wickedness go on. And, uh, you know, what a, it's, it's kind of discouraging sometimes. To, I, I, do, I can't think about it. I, I do think about it because I pray for people. And I, I'm a hopeful guy. I always hope for the best that people will repent and follow the Lord. And you think, why would they do that? You know, they say they know the Lord. They say they love the Lord. And boom, Satan's got them. Uh, there's a temptation to sin. And listen, when you sin as an individual, it affects your church. Don't think it doesn't. Uh, there's temptation as a church to use the world's methods. You know, there's a lot of churches who are offering God fruit and vegetables. You know, let's, let's have a great time. And they use the world's methods and they use the world's ideas. And man, they're, they're really into it. The world's music. They quit emphasizing Jesus and the gospel. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, would draw all men unto me. Listen, we don't need to attract people with our nice chairs and, you know, our beautiful music and our wonderful pastor and how good looking he is. And, you know, we, we missed out on that one. Uh, it's Jesus that we want to attract people to. And listen, if you and I will get out of the way, maybe they'll see Jesus. Sin lies at the door of our church. We need to preach Jesus. You look at the book of Mark sometime. The first thing Jesus says when, you, when he appears in the book of Mark is, repent and believe the gospel. That was Jesus' message. And the last thing he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. See, that's what Jesus emphasized. That's what we should emphasize. We need to preach his word. We need to relate to the gospel. Uh, leave the rock music to others. Uh, I found most churches don't do it very well anyway. Uh, programs aren't the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. We need to build on the Savior. Build on the Scriptures. The Word of God. Do the same with your family. Uh, listen, families can, uh, like I said, it can get you so angry. Listen, don't just get angry in your family. Get right. When anger comes up, that's showing what's in your heart. Get right. Do the same as an individual. Know Christ and, and His Word. God's wisdom will stand the test of time. Life's not easy. I mean, it's not easy for us. It's not easy for you. But God will help us. And God has a purpose. God's Word to Cain is still true today. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Listen, the way to do well is to obey the Lord. That's all Cain needed to do. That's all God was asking him to do. Cain, when you do your sacrifice... Do it the way I told you. <laughs> it's not that hard. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Listen, there's a, uh, there's a grave warning. Don't give in to Satan. Don't be deceived. Don't think you've figured out a, a, a better way. Jesus loves you so much that he gave him his life for you. Jesus said in, in the Gospels, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Man, that's, that's what we want, peace and rest. It comes in from Jesus. Are you saved this morning? If you stood before God and he asked, why should I let you into my heaven? <laughs> I hope your answer would be, I'm trusting Jesus. I've trusted Jesus. That's the only way. I've been good? No, that won't cut it. I was a member of Fellowship Baptist. I was the pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church. That, that wouldn't be good enough. It's only... Jesus. He's the only way. 
See, our, our sin condemns us. And let's, let's just be honest with ourselves. We're, we're sinners. We often choose what's wrong. We see right and wrong. I'll take wrong. And we sin. If you have kids, you know, you don't have to teach your children how to sin. It just comes natural. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Uh, we need to have a, a supernatural life. Our sin condemns us. We've all sinned. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What a blessing that we can know the Lord. God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus is the one, the other one standing at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and sup with him, he with me. When uh, one man asked, what must I do to be saved? In Acts chapter 16, the answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's that simple. Cain, why the long face? Why are you so angry? What about you this morning? Why the long face? Why are you so angry? It's not that hard to follow the Lord. He's the good shepherd. He came to offer us life, life eternal, peace and rest. If you don't have that this morning, it's not his fault. He's got it available for you today. Let's go to the Lord in, in prayer with heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Listen, sin affects every one of us. It affects me. It affects kings and prime ministers and paupers. But if sin is a problem, God has a solution. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood. I would encourage you, if you're not sure about your soul's salvation, today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for the record of history as to how you made us and how sin came and how you provided the remedy in your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray if there are any here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would work in their heart and draw them to yourself. Help them to see that they need to repent and to be saved. Lord, thank you for baptism this morning as we picture uh, the death and burial and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can, we can picture the reality of what you've done for us. Father, I pray that uh, you would work in our hearts, that we would know your peace, and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.